welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin. What are you saying? No, him scoot back a little. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what does this mean? Am I being too loud? No, scoot back. <laughs> Tone it down, oh, no. Caitlin. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Caitlin, that's why I pointed it, to him and like. Down a notch. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today I am joined by Subculture Recall, Tanya and Jose. Hey guys, how's it going? So today, we're doing a really fun collab. Uh, Tanya approached me recently about doing a really cool, like, Monster Mash idea design. So today, I'm gonna be doing a pinata design. Yay! Yeah. So basically, <laughs> she's gonna illustrate it, and we're gonna create it. And we've never done a pinata before, ever. We just hit them and had, <laughs> beat the crap out of them. It's been a goal of mine for a long time to make pinata, so I'm really excited to do it. Yeah, so we're excited to see what she comes up with, and then we're kind of scared in a little, in a way, <laughs> scared of how we're gonna make it. But we're just, we're gonna. You guys are invited to join our journey of making a pinata for the first time. Yeah, so for sure, after I'm done designing the monster from today's episode, go over to Subculture Recall, give them a sub, and make sure to check out their final pinata design. I'm excited to see what my creature is and how it has turned into some 3D thing that we're gonna beat the candy out of. So yes, it's that, gonna be really cool. That's gonna be the best part, her hitting the pinata for her birthday. We're gonna break the pinata, hopefully for her birthday. <laughs> yes, and I'm gonna kill one of my monsters. <laughs> As seen on YouTube, I'm killing yes. one of my creations. So. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited today. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're here in downtown Phoenix in the wonderful middle of summer and it's 94 degrees outside. We're going to go around and check out a couple of different That's murals to get some inspiration from. We have a really cool like art scene here in Phoenix. We have a lot of amazing murals that are on a bunch of different buildings. So we're going to walk around and see what we can draw inspiration from. So I mean the first one from today is this one's already pretty cool. It's like a giant Phoenix. So I think this would be a really cool inspiration to like start with, just yeah. having a giant firebird Phoenix. Cool. You know, it's our it's our it's our city. Yeah, it kind of seems like you have like our city in it, and then you kind of have like a little bit of our Mexican culture in it as well. Yeah, and you got like your personal. Was it called? Aesthetic? Aesthetic, yeah. yeah. Aesthetic. Like a little bit of the aesthetic yeah. too. Yeah. What I'm thinking in the long term is so we can start with like Phoenix for our city, and then I want to find different parts uh, in the different murals to kind of make also like an alabrije style. I think I said that right. Yeah. Um, basically, just some type of spirit guide for me that I can then beat the crap out of. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And alebrijes are already monster mashes um, of different animals that we we have in our Mexican culture. So it's kind of cool that we're like mashing things yeah. together. Yeah, we got like <laughs> cities, things. animals. <laughs> Just everything. The heat. Yeah, yeah the heat. <laughs> so much heat. I have a feeling this one's going to involve fire or some type of cool I feel like it. heat <laughs> element. I don't know what yet, yeah, but yeah. all right. So we started, we got the Phoenix to start. Let's go keep looking around and try to find a couple other mules and see like what inspiration we can get for this monster. Yeah. Are we walking off camera? <laughs> you guys are dorks. <laughs> it's hot. We're at a nice scolding, I think a hundred and something. Are you, are you gonna put flames on your pinata? <laughs> <laughs> to incorporate the heat of Arizona. <laughs> so, mural number two. I really like this one. I kind of like the idea of using the cactus and having it grow out of the figure. I don't really know exactly how I'll do it yet, but I also love skulls and skeletons. So maybe we can incorporate skulls, skeletons, maybe some cool cactus, give it a very Arizona feel. All right, but second mural for inspiration. I really like the purples and such, but specifically, we could use a hummingbird. So we could incorporate the hummingbird as one of the animals that we're gonna use for this. Yeah. But we could also bring back in this purples and pinks and all these different colors into our final design. So I think for sure we're gonna pick a hummingbird. That's, that's pretty awesome. It's kind of like our like, like 
like, uh, kind of like we're synced right now because Tanya really loves hummingbirds. Oh, perfect. Hummingbirds, yes. Oh, that I works. I have one tattooed on me. <laughs> oh, my, sorry. Yes. It's my favorite animal. Well, that worked. We got, we got a hummingbird inspiration from both the mural and from the tattoo. Yes. Tanya's favorite animal. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> So I mean, even the smallest murals are pretty great. I love this little cat and rat combo. And I mean, it's another animal that we can use for this monster mash. So I'm gonna just keep this one as record, a nice little black cat and a little cute white rat. Those would be really fun to incorporate with our birds and other things. Plus it will give me a couple more animal ligaments to like throw together. So we're gonna keep this one for our records. Dude, what happened? Somebody popped out the side. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, bless you. It's very good. Oh, price. yeah. You ready? I'm ready. What you get? Uh, the chorizo crepe. So it's like with a egg and pico and chorizo and spinach and crepe and amazingness. Amazingness. And crepe. Think I got a shorty burger. <laughs> okay. I had short rib in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can I see that? Can you can you lift that up? Yes. Lift up the bun. Lift up the bun. Yeah. <laughs> Get that bun lifting action. Yeah. <laughs> bun lifting action. That sounds that sounds really weird. Well, do we want to? Uh, we want to try to find maybe like I, I'm pretty good on my inspiration. I got quite a few things I can go off of. What do you think? I think I mean if, if you're you got all the inspiration you need, you feel you need, I mean, I think we're good. Yeah? Yeah. Because it's getting pretty hot, so. Yeah, I'm getting very <laughs> close. All right guys, back in the office after a very long day out in the hot Arizona sun. Took a real cold shower. Oh, I felt so good and switched out to a nice breezy tank top. So let's go ahead and jump in and start this monster mash. So to kind of go over what we discovered out in Phoenix, a couple of different things that we got from the murals. We had skulls, cactus, a cat, a rat, a hummingbird, and a phoenix, along with a couple of different color inspirations. So we're gonna go ahead and draw some inspiration from those murals to kind of figure out how I want to design my little spirit guide. So I read up on a couple of different things of the spirit guide, and this one is kind of like an interesting combo mash, and it reminds me of Pepita from Coco. It's kind of just like a bunch of different animals put together to make the spirit guide. So I'm really excited. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet, but I'm basically gonna choose a design that I feel fits me best. So I'm gonna do a bunch of different rough sketches and then kind of decide which one I feel would be like the perfect animal companion for me. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some rough sketches and get this thing started. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and get this drawing started. So first and foremost, I had all of my inspirations that we found through the murals there on the left side. And I had a lot to work with, a lot of different animal parts, a lot of different inspiration to draw from to make this overall creature. So first and foremost, I kind of tried to think about if I was literally to have this companion next to me at all times, like a small little spirit guide companion, I kind of wanted it to be not like pocket size, but maybe the size of a dog or some type of size that would make them a little bit easier and more travel friendly. Like I thought about making it the size similar to Pepita so I could ride on it, that would be super dope. But then I was like, meh, I think it'd be really cute to have something that was about like dog-ish size to make a cute little extra animal companion. So I did a couple of different ideas, com like combining the, the cat, the rat, 
and the bird bases and seeing what I liked and I ended up really liking the cat design. So I'm deathly allergic to cats. So what helps with this one is I was thinking the skin could be cactus because I am not deathly allergic to cactus, but I am deathly allergic to cats. So maybe that would help in the end. I don't really know, but uh, I really love the design and I have actually always really loved cats. Like when I was younger, I did want a pet cat just because I love how they move, how they look, how playful they are. But sadly that dream came to a quick end <laughs> when I found out how allergic I was. So this is kind of like my homage to the cat that I've always wanted. <laughs> and uh, I really had a lot of fun designing this creature. I've always loved having all these different textures and colors and this actually pushed it further than what I'm used to. For example, the whole main body being cactus. I had a lot of different cactus image up while I was working on it. And I think this one is kind of reminiscent of the barrel cactus, which has uh, more of like the ridges and on those ridges has the spines. I mean, most cactus are like that, but specifically that one. So with that, that was kind of the texture I was going for with the skin. And then I always have loved skulls. So being able to do a really cool cat skull and making it look kind of like Day of the Dead-esque with the cat skull combo face. I know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> I really liked doing that. And then adding more cactus spikes to the forehead. And then I think one of my favorite parts actually is like the crown of cactus flowers. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did, but this was actually my favorite part to color and to see come together. I've always really loved cactus flowers. They're beautiful and they're gorgeous. And right outside my house, my neighbor has this giant, amazing cactus that blooms every couple of months. And that's the nice thing with Arizona. Like, yes, in winter we get less blooms, but I would say like spring through fall, the cactus are blooming on and off throughout the year. So you get to see those flowers all the time and it's really nice. And we do get quite a few different desert flowers that bloom throughout the year. We have so many different bushes and plants that have flowers and it just makes for amazing, gorgeous scenery all throughout the year. And now I'm just gushing about Arizona, but uh, that was probably my favorite part for this drawing was those flowers. And then I also incorporated the color of the flowers plus the hummingbird throughout the body. I put the hummingbird feathers on the arms because I didn't I didn't add uh, actual wings to this one. I noticed there was a lot of alabrije that have wings attached to them. Like for example, in Coco Pepita, you could say is like a panther with wings on her. And I think, oh no, what's his name? The little dog. Oh no, I can't remember. But the companion of the main character in Coco also had little wings. And I saw that was pretty consistent throughout a lot of the Alabrije design. It wasn't a for sure every time, but it was there. But for some reason, I just really liked this one without wings. It just was a really cute, compact little creature. And I just, I didn't really like the idea of putting wings on it. So I wanted to incorporate the hummingbird still. So I put the neck has the coloring and patterning of what an actual hummingbird has. Like they have those really cute little purple to pink uh, feathers on their chest and neck. So I put those there. And then I also put the feathers on its arms and its back to add some more color and texture. And I really love how that one turned out. And then for the Phoenix element. So I did want to incorporate fire somehow to pay homage to the Phoenix bird and Phoenix being the main city here in Arizona. And so I incorporated it in the tail along with, I put some fire on the back of its arms. It kind of gives me the idea of imagine this one, like run flying through the air. Like the closest thing I can think of was in Inuyasha. Oh no, I can't remember what it's called either. I am just really short of names today but there was this giant like raccoon dog looking creature that just would run on the air. That's how it flew. That's kind of what I imagined with this creature. It would run like with fire and just run through the air. And I think that would look really, really sick. And then of course, I really love uh, Asian mythology and all of that. So I had to incorporate something into this design. So I added some extra tail feathers that look similar to more of the Chinese Phoenix and I absolutely love it. I think it added a nice little extra bit to that tail and just kind of brought the whole design together. And then I added a little bit extra bone texturing. I put some ribs on the outside of the body uh, just to give 
a cool dead bone look and it also helped break up the cactus texture. I just think it was a nice little pop against the green. And then it was time to dive into coloring. So usually I don't pick pink for things, but I really love the pink cactus blossom, so I had to do that. And it just like pushed me a little more to try a different color palette that I don't use as much. And it was just fun to incorporate all of these bright and wonderful colors together into this really gorgeous, colorful cat creature. Ooh, that was a lot of C's there. <laughs> but either way, I hope you guys like this one. And please, please go give Tanya and Jose a sub. They are amazing friends of mine, really hard workers, and I love their YouTube channel. They make a lot of fun content. So speaking of more content, if you guys would like to help support the channel and get some more content, go check out my Patreon. This particular painting is going to be the Photoshop file of the month for this month. Last month, it was the Bowser drawing, which I'm going to be posting a little late, so it should be up by now. But if you guys would like to get the Photoshop file of the month for this and the Bowser one, go check out my Patreon. I'd really appreciate the support, and by supporting the Patreon and supporting me, you're giving me an opportunity to make this full-time. Currently, I'm doing a full-time job plus this, but if I get your guys' support on Patreon, I might be able to make the transition soon. So thanks again, guys, for checking this out, and make sure to go give Tanya and Jose a sub over at Subculture Recall. All right, so we are all done with this Monster Mash. So this was a ton of fun. I had a blast trying to figure out how I wanted to incorporate all of the different inspiration from the murals, and I love this guy. Literally, if this could be a real cat for me, I would own it. If this could be my spirit guide, 100% it would be. I love like skull aesthetics, and then it kind of rings true to where I'm from here in Arizona. It has a lot of stuff that I really identify with, and I absolutely love it. So we overall took the body shape of the cat, added in the little four feet of the rat. I kind of like that idea. And then overall took inspiration from combining colors from like the hummingbird and the different cactus flowers and cactus skin, and then added a touch of the phoenix with the fire and adding kind of the tails of more of a Chinese style phoenix to add a little bit extra flair. So I know a couple of you might come back and critique me about how it just kind of looks random and there's a bunch of different colors thrown everywhere, but when I was doing research on the different spirit guides and alebrijes that are actually made in Mexico, it's very similar. They just have chunks of different patterns that appear randomly in different parts of the body. They have different body parts of animals just kind of pasted together in a really cool and interesting way. And I thought that worked really well for this guy. So I just went with it and I really like how it turned out. So if you guys want to see this, converted into a pinata, you gotta go check out Subculture Recall. Please go check out the other half of this collab. I love my friends Tanya and Jose. They are amazing people. So go give them a sub and give them some love and see how they create a pinata out of this. And then you might see me potentially really destroy that pinata and just ruin all of their hard work. So go check out the other half of this collab and go subscribe to Subculture Recall. But anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, you can go and hit that subscribe button. I have new videos videos every week and those range from monster mashes to the hundred dragons challenge to just a bunch of really fun art challenges. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.